I can't see your introduction. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a drag queen. I'm not a juggler. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage a student of Tuskegee, Alabama. He's a student of plant science and an LGBTQ activist. If you would, give a warm round of applause for Mr. Mel Groves. Okay, this like Alright. Well first off I wanna start off I want everybody to let the corners of your mouth touch your eyelids and smile. I need a big warm smile and a warm round of applause for standing in the face of this overwhelming injustice. Right here today, this physical overwhelming injustice, okay? And I want to say, like, I just want to look each of you all in the face and say that, for one, I'm 20 years old, okay? And I'm a trans man of, of color, okay? So I'm a trans experience and of color experience. So a lot of people might say that in this world, I came in with three strikes. And so I, want, I just want each, each of you all to take a moment and be empathetic. And I know it's not hard for people in the LGBT community, but to some people, which we won't name. <laughs> it's difficult. But each and every day I wake up, and like many of you, I look in the mirror, and a lot of things that I'm not excited about, I'm not happy about, and I have to hold my head and matriculate through the world and prove and show to the world that I exist, I believe in my existence, and therefore I should be respected. Yeah. Okay? And I don't think that... Us as LGBT members, we get the due respect that we are deserved. Because each and every day, like I said, we get up and we go through these hardships. And it's disgusting. Since we want to mention disgusting, it's very disgusting to get here to stand on the front of state, a state, a capital building, and to see people, people who have woken up for no other reason, not to fight poverty, not to fight any other other injustices in the world. But to come and spread hate. 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 Pure hate. To people who have done nothing but spread love. So I encourage each of you, my LGBT friends, my members, my family, my allies, to stand up, continue to hold your head high, hold your head so high, smile, and embrace each of these people, even though they don't embrace us, because we know that we are love, and we know that we keep, create, and we foster peace. Thank you. I would like to welcome to the stage someone who's been fighting for equality for our community for decades. She is a warrior. She is as strong as the wind, yes. and she is immovable as a mountain. Yes. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. Someone who I consider to be an absolute inspiration. Y'all show some love for Ms. Hawking McDaniel. I'm Miss Harvey. I'm Harvey McDaniel. I'm transgender. I'm a human and civil rights activist from Huntsville, Alabama. I work both with Free to Be in Huntsville, where we advocate for the human and civil rights of gender and sexual minorities. And I work here in Montgomery with Montgomery Pride United, who, along with several others, are making sure that your voice is being heard here today. And I speak a lot about using your voice, and we're here today to show our love and our support for our community and to show the Judicial Inquiry Commission that our voice will be heard and that we expect them to do the right thing and remove Roy Moore from Alabama politics. Today, not, easy, not only is it important to stress the need for constant monitoring of our elected officials, and there are many of you who do that so well, monitoring our elected officials. Thank you, Gary Wright. But we must 
must also constantly draw attention to their actions, and we must constantly use our voices to hold them accountable for their actions. If you don't use your voice and speak out against injustice, Alabama politics remains the same, and we have to get Alabama politics fixed. So we're here today continuing our fight for equal rights, as we have several times in the past. We're here using our voice. We're still here struggling for acceptance and inclusion. And we're still here promoting love and equality and justice for all. If we have to use our voice every day, we will. Because every day we see the discrimination against gender and sexual minorities. Every day we struggle with oppression. And every day we struggle with hatred against our community. Every day we are despised citizens in our own land. Citizens. Remember that word. We are citizens. The groups here speaking out against us today are the ones who would oppress us and deny us our human and civil rights. The groups here speaking out against us today are the ones hurling hatred upon us in many vile and despicable ways. So here we have a nation divided on many fronts. And we have two factions here expressing their beliefs on civil rights. You see one group claiming to be the Christian moral majority hurling hatred and supporting corruption in Alabama politics. And you see us here. You see our loving, beautiful community standing united and strong and speaking out for justice here today to assure that the right thing is done to see Roy Moore removed from office, to speak up and use our voice collectively. And when our voice is not being heard and not being valued and not being represented, we must join and work together collectively to change the future of Alabama politics, to go forward instead of backwards, and to work together for the future of our children and our grandchildren, who are also citizens of this great country. Our community that you see here today is representative of our culture. We are beautiful. We are loving. We are talented. We are creative. And we are wonderfully colorful. Yes. And we're a community of voters using and expressing our voices. our voices and our bullhorns here today, and, and we're using our voices in any way that we can. We're going to use our voices in town meetings, we're going to use it in every election that you as a United States citizen are entitled to use your voice in. You're entitled to have a voice in every election. Use it in your emails, use it in your church, use your voice in your schools, and use it with your neighbors. Use it to defend our rights, and use it to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. If you don't use your voice, you are silent. And then you will be silenced. And how can anyone be silent while we're watching someone try to take our voices away and try to deny us our human and our civil rights? Please speak up and please use your voices anywhere that you can and every opportunity that you can. As Ambrosia says, when we speak, we use good manners. And when we speak, we speak with pride and we speak with dignity and we speak with love. Because that's what we're promoting here today is love, equality, and inclusion and justice for all. Thank you. Full power has been restored to the warp drive of equality. <laughs> As we come along, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to prepare you. Um, evidently, the spectators who have packed the courtroom are not exactly happy right now. 
The troopers have cut the live feed in the overflow room uh, because of outbursts and um, there have been a few issues on the inside. Um, I know that we're coming out, we, well, I, to my shock and surprise, to my absolute amazement, it looks like things are getting ready to close down. So I want to be able to prepare everyone for those who are going to be exiting the building. They may not be happy with the results. They may not be happy with what they see today. We know. You know, we all, well, you know, if, if we're not happy with what happens here today, I want to remind everybody, do the due process of law, which even a drag queen understands, should we not be able to seek a safe and secure a safe and legal and fair legal system for the state of Alabama today, we do have the option of appealing to the Department of Justice of the United States of America for them to come and intervene. So we don't have to wait. I don't want anyone here to lose heart in the event that we don't you know, seek the outcome that we're hopeful for. I want us to maintain our manners and maintain our dignity and maintain our fight. I want us to. I want each of you to know and comfort in the fact that if we do not see, if, if, if what we do, what we see today does not support a fair and equal justice system for the state of Alabama in every court, divorce court, family court, probate court, traffic court, civil court, criminal court, that we will seek justice from the Justice Department of the United States of America. Have faith in yourself and your community and your country. Hold on just one second, I need to confer here. Right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a little bit ahead of time, and he may not exactly be ready for us, but um, I would like to welcome to the stage the Regional Director of the American Atheists, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chuck Miller. Thank you for joining us again, Chuck. Thank you. We the people. Those are the first three words in the Constitution, and they're powerful words. And when they were written, it was a dream. Because... There wasn't freedom and liberty for everyone, for we the people, when those were written. But our founding fathers were visionaries, and they left us the work to do. And that work is still going on and will be going on for some time. We the people, all the people, it wasn't we the Catholics, we the Protestants, we the Jews, we the straight white males, it, that was not the statement. The Constitution guarantees liberty, in fact in the preamble it has the phrase, to secure liberty and ensure domestic tranquility. That means everyone's rights are respected. Everyone. Everyone means all. Equality means nothing if everyone's not equal. Everyone, everyone in this country has to stand equal before the law. And we're still not there. We're still not there as long as we have judges like Roy Moore who think they can interpret God's will in some way that serves their personal agenda. And make no mistake, Roy Moore knew he would wind up in this courtroom this day. He knew it. It was calculated. Roy Moore is nothing more than a politician. He's a cheap politician.
He did this to set himself up to be removed from the bench. People that think he needs to stay on the bench don't realize he wants to be removed. Roy Moore, Roy Moore will, and I predict this, within 24 hours will announce he's running for governor. And if he's off the bench, he's free to launch that campaign. Roy Moore wasn't going to stay on the bench. Roy Moore was not going to get reelected. There's an age limit, and he knew he was facing that. So where does he go next? He wants to be governor. Well, he's no more qualified to be governor than he was qualified to be on the bench. Now I'm going to call back to some things that uh, Paul said a little earlier and remind you, a wise man said, make them live up to their own rules. Well, Roy Moore doesn't live up to his own rules. Jesus had something to say about adultery and remarriage. So, if Roy Moore were to stand before himself, because in Luke, Jesus says, a man that marries a woman that's been divorced commits adultery. So he'd have to rule against himself if he's going to live by his own rules. And in 1 Thessalonians, it tells people that follow Jesus, as he claims to, that you should leave, lead a quiet life and mind your own business. And I'll put a fine point on it. I'm straight. I'm, I'm in a straight marriage. It's none of my business if someone wants to be in a same-sex marriage. It doesn't threaten me. It's not my business, and I'll mind it. I, I'll, claim, I'll claim to be a better Christian as an unbeliever than Roy Moore is. In Psalms, let's get let's give you a uh, let's give you another rule to live by. Don't put your trust in princes. Well, I could have just said judges. Roy Moore considers himself a prince of the judiciary. He's no such thing, and he knew he'd wind up here. Just Roy Moore went to law school. He knows there's a supremacy clause in the Constitution. He counseled his supporters not to know that. He knows that there is a constitutional judicial hierarchy and that the Alabama Supreme Court is not at the top and he's not at the top. He knows that. He knows he's got to follow lawful orders of a higher court. But then he but then he defies that. And he knew he'd win, wind up here. He knew this would happen because he's a cheap politician. He's also one of those people. Paul, Paul quoted a scripture. There's another translation that doesn't use the word scribes. It uses the word lawyers. Lawyers and Pharisees, hypocrites, who bind up loads that they'll put on someone else's back, but they won't carry. Roy Moore's a coward. He's a craven little coward. An old man. Now, gosh, why, why should I practice ageism here? Well, he's an old man that puts shoe black in his hair to hide his age. Just pure vanity. Just pure. He, he's a vain, cocky little man. He has no business on the bench. Now, if he wants to enforce God's law, there's a couple of things he could do. He could he could go into a church and he could become an elder or a deacon. But whoops, there's some passages in the Bible that says he's not qualified for those offices. So a Bible-believing church wouldn't have him. Wouldn't have him in that. He could become an Ayatollah and, and go to a country where they mix church and state, where they rule based on what they think God's law is. 
Okay, I'm, I'm going to switch to part two here in a second, but I want to point out that in this block of Dexter Avenue, we have a perfect piece of symbolism that shows what the intent of the First Amendment of the Constitution is. On this side of the street, we have the state. On that side of the street, we have the church. There's a median in between yes. them. The church is free to do what the church does across the street. So if you want to uh, impose God's law, if you want to voluntarily, if you want to voluntarily put yourself under that law, you can go right across the street and do it. You can, you, can, you can deny yourself all kinds of rights doing that. You can do that. You're free to do that. Because, again, it's we the people. All the people. That's what we're governed by. Jesus even said, render unto Caesar what Caesar's and render unto God. And plain as the nose on your face, you have to twist your head around 180 degrees to make that mean anything other than don't mix religion and government. So, yeah, you could say that's not my rule. I don't live I, I don't live by Jesus' rule. But he doesn't. He has he defies it. He defies not only the laws of man, he defies the laws of his own God. He's nothing but a cheap politician. And he thinks he's going to be governor. Wouldn't that be wonderful? No, no more. 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 All right, let me switch to part two, and I'll I'll fill up us. I'll fill up time. I know we're ahead of we're ahead of schedule. Voting. You have to vote like your rights depend on it, or you'll lose them. We have laws that are chipping away at women's rights. We have we have laws chipping away at LGBT rights. We have laws that are chipping away at real religious liberty, like the Constitution prescribes. We have laws. We have laws that are perpetuating slavery. Let me explain that. If you were taught in school that the 13th Amendment abolished slavery, you're forgetting there's a loophole. And that loophole's being exploited today. So we got work to do on that front. That loophole is convict leasing and for-profit prisons with forced labor. We have to end that practice. And that practice is making the political cronies of people like Roy Moore rich. And that, and that money, that money flows back to him. His, his foundation for moral law, and what a laugh the, the name of that organization is, collects over half a million dollars a year. Where do you think that money comes from? It comes from people that think he's going to rule in, his, in their favor. That's something that needs to be looked into. There's a lot of things that need to be looked into about Roy Moore. And believe me, when he runs for governor, these things are going to be looked into. You've got to vote. Now, now here's here's something here's something to think about. So, a lot of us have seen the polls. We think the outcome of the general election coming up in Alabama is a foregone conclusion. I'm here here to tell you it's not because the polls have been polling the likely voters. You know, the turnout in Alabama is only about 50%. On some, on some elections, it's about 47% of the people vote, which means less than 25% decide for you who your elected officials will be. And, and that's at the top of the ticket. At the bottom of the ticket, it's even worse.
because people will, will vote for the president or for the governor and ignore everything else. You've got to vote. You've got to vote from top to bottom of the ticket every time. And if that happened, if, if there was a, a turnout approaching 80% in Alabama, approaching 80% in Alabama, it would upend the, what the polls are predicting today. Yes. It would completely change the political landscape. So I, I mentioned Roy Moore running for governor. He'll run for governor in 2018. So we need to get ready for 2018 now. We need to have people running for office. There were two or three people mentioned today. Hello. There were people mentioned here today who are running for office. They need support. We all have to have to go out and do the grassroots work to get people that are supported by the majority of people in Alabama. Because when you look at what people think about these issues, a, minor, a, a minority, that 25% minority, is winning all the time. Why? Because they go out and vote. And they're told how to vote. I'm not standing here today to tell you how to vote. In fact, with my organization, we follow the law. So I don't tell you how to vote, but I'm telling you, you need to vote. Yes. You need to vote. Yes. And you need to vote. And you need to vote in that 2018 election. Roy Moore got elected to be Chief Justice on one of those midterm elections. That's by design in Alabama. We elect our governor and all of our major state officials on a midterm election. Do you know why? Because the turnout's low. And the turnout favors one party. And it favors the most conservative uh, conservative. I, I don't want to even use that word. The most regressive elements of that party. And that's what you get. And, and we get that because we haven't voted. You need to read the rest of Leviticus, honey. Let's let, let's, yeah. <laughs> the children can wear themselves out. <laughs> so, we talked about voting. Let's, let's talk a little more about running for office. I looked into what the qualifications are to be a, a probate court judge in Alabama. You only have, it's not much, that's right. You have to be a resident of the county where you would serve and be 18 years old and a registered voter. Anybody here could run to be a probate judge in their county. Uh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody can run to be a probate judge in Alabama. And I've got to say, I felt a little sorry for the probate judges that received Roy Moore's order because I, I don't know of any of them that are lawyers. They're not judges. They're judges in name only. They're clerks of the court. And they got and they got and some of them some of them got taken in by Roy Moore's order which he now, now said inside that courtroom. He said it was a suggestion. Now, I know Roy Moore knows enough English to know that when he puts the word order in a document and signs it as the Chief Justice, it's an order. To turn around and say it isn't is pandering to the, is pandering to the worst degree. It's pandering to people's ignorance. It's pandering to the to the worst impulses in, in people. But let, let's talk about upholding everybody's rights. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this twice so it sinks in. The minute, the minute anyone acts to restrict anyone's rights, it's a threat to your rights. 
I consider Roy Moore's illegal order to ignore the Supreme Court of the United States and to ignore the Constitution to be a threat to my rights. Because if you can ignore the Constitution, if you can ignore the Supreme Judiciary in this country, and it's not him, if you can ignore that, you are making your own law. That's the rule of man. We're founded on the rule of law in this country. In fact, in the spirit of making them obey their own rules. Oh, I mentioned Psalms, not putting up your faith in princes. New Testament. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. So, if you believe what you say you believe, and you live under the laws of this country, then you've got to submit yourself to them. Roy Moore, you have to, uh, you have to live up to those, those laws. If you want to apply your Bible to yourself as a Christian, you can go right ahead. Be my guest. You're welcome to it. You do whatever you do, you do what you think is right based on that. That's fine. So long as so long as you don't go against the law of we the people. And that's everyone. That includes the people that say they're standing up for Roy Moore. It includes them too. So they can they can do and they can live to any standard they, they want to. Absolutely, they're, they're free to do that. They're free to do that because it's we the people. So I'm going to say it again. The minute anyone tries to restrict anyone's rights, it's a threat to everyone. Every one of us. And who is that? Let's say it. We the people. 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 We we live we live in a we live in a democratic republic. And that means we're ruled by law. We're not ruled by the whims of a majority. And we're not ruled by the whims of a minority that claims to be a majority. That's not the way we're ruled. The minute, the minute we're ruled that way, we descend into chaos. Roy Moore doesn't care about the rule of law. He's demonstrated that. He's demonstrated that in the court today. And he needs to be gone. And while I, I, I'm, re I'm ready, I'm ready to work for anybody that's going to st stand against Roy Moore in that governor's race. Just, just about, just about anybody. I can't think of someone worse. I absolutely can't think of anyone that would be worse for Alabama as governor than Roy Moore. He might even make us nostalgic for Robert Bentley. Oh, a, a, another man that doesn't live up to his own rules, you know, and you know, and, and I'm fine if you've got a religious rule you want to live by, live by it. Don't make somebody else live by it. Because, because what do we call it? When, when it's Muslims doing that, we call that Sharia law. We don't want Sharia law. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, and everything you think is in Sharia law can be dug out of the Bible and justified by the Bible if you twist it like somebody like Roy Moore does. Now I'm starting to run out of steam. I'll stay up here if you want me to, but uh, I, I think I think I've said enough. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Y'all get something on hand.
Um, ladies and gentlemen, rolling up this way right here, right now, um, we have a, a speaker that she is handicapped, she is in a power chair, she can't make it up these steps over here, um, and unfortunately because of our restrictions that have been placed and put in place just especially for this event today, we will not allow her freedom of speech to be limited, but I would like for you guys on the steps to please come down here and join us. Let's gather here. I know we don't have a lot of shade, but I think that her message is a very important message to be heard, and I want to be sure that she has the opportunity to do that. I'm not sure. Could somebody untangle that cord? Let me see how far I can get it, because I'm not sure if I can get it all the way, but if I can, and if I can, I'm going to grab that bullhorn. There we are. There we are. Let's see how far I can get. Hallelujah. Let's see how far we can go. All right. We gone, he's on down, he's on down the road. We won't carry no trouble that night. Be alone. We gone, he's on down, he's on down, he's on down the road. All right, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, go ahead, Angie. Honey, go ahead and get her up in this corner out of that hot sun. Can she get up there? Okay, okay. Right, right there, right there, baby. Just hold your thought, hold your horses, right there. I'm bringing the, I'm bringing the mountain to Mohammed. So you just hold, hold on, wait, oh, go back over there where they can see you, baby. Okay, okay. Okay, I tell you what, where you were standing, can you get her back over there so everybody can see her? Is that, is that, yeah, right, that little shady spot, right there. The one that the sun made just for you, baby. See it right over there. All right, she's on backup power, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing backup power all over the place today. Ease your deal space in the shade. Where's our bullhorn? Where's our bullhorn? It's not going to reach that far. The mic won't reach down there for her, and I want her words to be heard. She's got it down there. She's got it down there. Uh -huh. She's got it down there. Oh, they've got her one. They've got her one. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would, please give your your attention to a very dear friend of mine who I lost 20 years ago because life had brought her so far down that when she was blessed with her second child, she thanked God, and she went all the way over to that side. And I knew that she needed her child and she needed her God more than she needed me. So I said, when God's ready, we'll be friends again. When God's ready, it'll be time. Three months ago, I walked into a P-Flag meeting. And who did I find as the mother of a transgender child at the P-Flag meeting? But my long-lost friend. Ladies and gentlemen, give, some, give a round of applause for Miss Amanda Bynum. Really that many other people, and then 
and um, I ended up getting pregnant. And um, my child, this is what she was referring to a minute ago, my child was stillborn. And it devastated me. And I really went into a deep depression. And when you have alcoholics and drug addicts telling you that um, you're drinking too much and you're doing too many drugs, then you know there's a problem. Um, you know, when, when people can't even pay rent for smoking crack and doing meth, and they're telling you, you have a problem. Um, so, uh, Ambrosia helped keep me sane. We would go for our midnight rides and go get the imported chocolate and sit at the park or her church, which I was scared to go into, but she forced me to at 2 o'clock in the morning, sprinkled holy water on me. I thought I was going to catch fire, but I did it. And I was like, okay, so this didn't hurt too bad, but we would sit in front of her church and eat chocolate or drink or whatever, because you can drink at her church. Um, but, you know, that was Episcopal, and I never went to church growing up, so I had no idea what church life was supposed to be like. Um, 